Hello, I'm Mark and welcome to my workshop. Today I'm going to be turning this box into this. Let's see how I did it. This needed to be a really quick project and I didn't have time to make a box. So I just got one off Amazon and I'll drop a link to this and any other items I use in the project in the description below. Firstly, I needed to remove the hardware so I could sand it to 150 grit. <laughs> I've recently started to use this Rubio Monaco wood prep. You wipe it onto the surface of the wood, it gets rid of any particles left behind by sanding. While that's drying, I better mix the colour I need. I'm going for orange for this project, so I'm mixing yellow with red. Now you need more yellow than you do red. Red seems to be the dominant colour when mixing orange. So this first try, I didn't quite get the mixture right. So I just need to add a little bit more yellow to get the orange that I wanted. And I love using Rubio Monaco for these types of projects. If they don't have the colour you want and they have got hundreds of colours, you can mix two colours together to get the shade or the colour you actually want. Applying Rubio Monaco couldn't be easy. You need one of the brown scrubby pads and I generally cut it down to size. You then dip it in to the Oil Plus 2C and just scrub it on. Little goes a long way with this product, but don't worry if you use too much, you can wipe it off at the next stage. Rubio Monaco does start to bond with the wood straight away, but leave it about five to 10 minutes to dry and then just wipe off the excess with a lint free cloth. And because this was cheap from Amazon, the hardware was dull and burnished. So I decided to give it a quick polish by popping it into my Dremel Multivice using the Dremel Light and some polishing compound. Off screen I added some pure white onto the inside of the box and then sent it to the laser etcher to add on a logo. After laser etching, I have to scrub out the carbon from inside the etching part of the logo. To do this, I use my Dremel H260 set at 1500 RPM with an EZ speed click finishing abrasive buff. In this instance, I'm using the 320 grit. Then it's time to add the hardware back on. I just add a dab of super glue onto the screws. The box itself is now complete. It's now on to the inside. And for that, I'm gonna be using this piece of shadow foam. I'm using the orange and black because that's the color scheme I'm going for. For cutting, you're going to need a cutting kit and some cut resistant gloves. Starting with a new blade in the scalpel, I lightly trace around the outside of the box to get the size of foam I need. Not cutting too deeply at this point, I'm just scoring the surface. Then once I've got the shape I need, I start to make deeper and deeper cuts so I can cut all the way through the foam. Now I just need to refine the size to make sure it fits inside the box, taking a little off at a time to make sure I don't make it too small. Thank you. 
in the tea box are going to need a space for tea bags, a spoon and some sugar. So I'm starting off with the tea bags, which is the biggest thing to fit in the box. And again, just lightly cutting around the shape of the tea bag. Then I'm just checking the corners are all cut through and making the cut a little bit deeper. Now you're ready to peel back the phone, and this is normally the most satisfying part. Get your finger in there and just peel it back a little bit at a time. Get your finger right in there and just peel it back right against the edge. Don't rip it out, just peel it gently, and it should come straight out. gone deep enough with your first set of cuts just cut again just peel out the foam just double checking for sizing tea bags seem to fit perfectly in there as you can see i'm using the only decent tea bag out there yorkshire tea if you want to argue with this please drop it in the comments then it's just a matter of doing exactly the same with everything else that's going in the box. The spoon's a little fiddlier, it's a funnier shape, but just take it slow and trace around first. often handy to add a finger pull. I'm just using a circle template to cut round to make a shape that's handy to get my fingers into to pull the spoon out. And as you can see here, there's some great camera work. Lovely view of my arm and hand there. You can't see what I'm doing. Basically cutting a rectangle for the sugar to go in. And that's basically the job done. If you've made it this far into the video, it'd be great for you to give me a like or a subscribe or even drop a comment down below. Right, that's me done for today. Hope you enjoyed this project and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And now I'm off to make myself a cup of tea. Love you, bye.